Um, but basically, you know, the application is just saying that we're looking to, you know, preserve this property because it's, you know, culturally significant to the town. Um, and by preserving the property, then the town has options to use the building um, for other purposes. Using it as a town office space is one thing that it could be used for, um, but not the only thing. Um, so that's, um, you know, pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, you know, if anybody has, you know, suggestions or comments they'd like to make on the application or for the application, I'd appreciate that. They're going to, they're going to give you a hard time on handicap ramps and stuff there. The building inspector's building ain't handicap. Civil defense office ain't handicap. And they're going to give you a hard time about using that building. Right, that building inspector's ain't even a handicap right, that building. Nobody does nothing about that. Okay, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah that. The, the handicap ramp is an issue for occupancy. It's not an issue for preservation. The access board, which is who handles, you know, um, access and handicap accessibility, will have to submit an application for a waiver um, if we don't have the money to put in the ramp. If we get the CPC money to fix the roof and the boiler, then the money we would save by not renting here would be enough money to pay for the ramp um, and the plumbing. But to initially move in, you can go to the uh, State Board of Architectural Review and get a, it's been done many times, you get a waiver uh, so we could use, use that building for, you know, a new use. And it's done all the time in the state because there are a lot of towns that have old buildings for town halls and stuff and they don't have the access right away. So one avenue is you go to the State Board of Architectural Review uh, and basically you just show them what you want to do and you know you have a time frame and you get this and this and then they vote on it and they generally there's examples of it all over that they generally grant them you just you know you have a time period you know that they like to see that you're going to accomplish that uh, so as far as like moving in there, you, know, <coughs> you get that done you know if you get that request granted then you can do that ramp, you know, at a later date, but it's not something that would necessarily, you know, stop everything. But that CPC committee is all stacked. You look at the people on it. Well, well it's just one step at a time. Yeah. It is. Right, so it is a process, but I think we can get the waiver that we need for the, for the access. Okay. Um, so. How much? Right. We did have some good conversation at the last meeting, so you know, I think um, going back with this revised application, uh, March 6th is that meeting. Okay. Uh, next thing. Excuse me. Did you say March 5th? March 6th, I believe. That's that's a Wednesday. That's that's one. Well, that's the, uh, I'll have to double check the date. I'll double check the date. March 6th is a Thursday. Okay. Is this just for information? Just really just for information because we already voted on the 27th <coughs> to submit the application. I just I wanted everybody to have a chance to see it. Make sure it didn't you don't have any additions or changes to it. This is something I would go through before the two Correct. If, if the CPC um, committee agrees with the application, then they'll have to submit a town meeting article. Um, to get it okay. Uh, next thing. Uh, Public comment. The next thing would be the, the million dollar question. Uh, discuss having a special town meeting and possibly set a date for this. Based on the information that we got at that financial meeting this morning, and it's not a guarantee, but the accountant is hoping uh, to have, he said, the end of the month, and it was like, well, Friday's the end of the month. Uh, and hopefully that will be done by then, and then uh, the schedule A and the recap can be done and submitted. Um, and 
and banking on that and looking at the time frame for uh, you know, uh, having a special town meeting to fix the 14 with, you know, free cash and whatever else, whatever options we have, uh, that is the question whether we want to try to do that or not. Yes. I think that if we put it, if, if we think that there's a good likelihood that we will be ready to do it by the end of March, then I think <clears throat> that it would make sense to, um, to if we can piggyback off the schools meeting so they pay for it um, and then if we are not able to have that meeting the worst case scenario is we just don't we just table our items and then have to pay for it. <coughs> 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 right. hold on please keep the conversation yes yeah I I don't think that we should be I don't know, it just feels wrong or like we're playing games. And I don't think at this point it's going to be hard enough to present what we need to present and get people to support and vote it than to be jockeying around and saying, okay, well, we'll go forward with the special town meeting even if we don't have our numbers so that the school can get their stuff. And then, you know, it's just, it's, it's too complicated. I, I appreciate that they would be willing to pay for it, but I also don't think having a special town meeting in March and another one in April and then having the May one is going to do this town any big favor. I, I don't think that's the way to go. And I think to get people involved and to bring people together, okay, in order to pass the override, in order to get the funding needed for the school, it's going to take the whole community. And we're all going to have to work together. And I don't think by you know people jockeying for position to get a more favorable date is is the way to do that. I think we need to look at this as an entire we town make people. and deal with the whole town issue. And the school is part of a town, <coughs> and that's why I think we should wait on setting a date. We have a meeting coming up on the third, and we can proceed from there that book, that's my feeling on the issue because right now we still have not got the books to the DOR to certify free cash and our past history has shown that this is not a quick process for the town of Templeton to get their numbers certified so that's where I'm coming from and of course the biggest question is when the books will be closed to even submit. Right. Never minding. We've been told end of the month. I don't know how many times. Well, <laughs> today, today though, we, it was, uh, you know, we were t the, we, the right. town administrator brought up the letter from the DOR that we all have of, uh, you know, state aid. We don't have this scheduled aid by this. So, the 14th, we're, we're um, done. Again, the emphasis, he's, and I, apparently, I think the account last year went out on a limb and said it would be this, and he's, it, it apparently it didn't happen or something. It got burned. So he's, and I don't, I don't blame him for not wanting to predict anything. Uh, he did say he would try uh, hard as he can to uh, basically one half, one part is done. The the cash book reconciliation for all. There are some little things that need to be checked it and verified but that part is basically complete so half of the, the process is, is, is done uh, so that's the part that's the biggest question when they're closed yes that's what, given that they told us that it's going to be the end of the month so many times we know that we will be done if it doesn't get done this time so if it doesn't get done and then suddenly we have no local aid coming in we would need to have a special town meeting to decide what we're shutting down anyway. Do you see what I'm saying? By, by telling them that we, oh, that we, we are assuming that you're not going to do your job and have those figures to us the, the way the DOR wants them in their timely fashion, even though you told us that you will, we, by setting a date that's later, are anticipating their failure, which sends a message, I think, to them that we don't put priority on having this done right away. And then if they do not get done, and we lose our local aid because we don't get the books closed in time, 
I mean, the, like they have to be closed <coughs> in two weeks. So if they are closed in two weeks, that gives DOR a month to get this done. Yep. I mean, while I understand that failure is possible, the consequences of us sending the message that, that they have, that we assume that it's not going to get done on time and we should just wait till May, I think that um, it sends the wrong message to the people that need to get the work yeah. done. I, that's where I disagree. It's like, okay, so we're going to have a special town meeting even if we don't have our books closed so that we can go and ask people for more money. I, I, well, because we won't Without have an explanation. <laughs> Without an explanation. Well, no, what? We've had explanations. Okay. This, I, I've heard this board complain so many times about using free cash as that's why we're in this mess because we keep using free cash, we keep using free cash. And I know that ideally free cash would be part of a solution to this problem, but clearly just saying let's spend all of our free cash and not put it, and that's, we were just doing the same thing that we've railed against for all this time. Why have we been here for the last year? If we're in the exact same position but worse off than we were a year ago, I think that because um, that's what we're saying is that we need to know exactly how much free cash we have because we're planning on using every penny of it. I think that it's, it sets the correct example to say, look, we either need to have an override or make cuts because that's what's going to have to happen anyway. We're going to be in the same situation next year. Maybe we'll push it off another year with tax titles, but then in two years we're going to be here. So I think it just sends the wrong message if we should do what I think is what the town is expecting us to do, which is take action. Yeah. Um, when I was listening to Bob speak um, on his financial update, he said that the end of the month uh, for March 29th would be an okay date for special town meeting, and that if we, if I read this correctly, um, he will be ready to close fiscal 2013 by the end of the month. And again, since I've been here, which hasn't really been very long, I've heard two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. He will then prepare a Schedule A. Um, Schedule A must be received by March 14th in order to receive even a March payment. If they're not done, we're kind of up a creek, so why are we not making them? <coughs> they, have, they have to be done, so scheduling that meeting, again, I guess it's what I would have said, or what, maybe not the way that Ken's saying it, is that sending the message that every time we're here, we've talked about this. We already canceled one meeting. Okay, I understand that, but you know, to have the school pay for that through a grant and not the town where we're already having a budget crisis and we are all one town and that includes the school. That includes the school. Right. They're, not, they're not separate. So to have that, have them pay for it, it would help our budget and they have to be finished because we're going to lose state aid. So that's a looming, that's huge. So if we set the town, the special town meeting, and again, we don't have it, the school can still have theirs. That's not the way to do it. We need to have ours, and we need to have our free cash, and we need to be reconciled, and that just has to be done. So to set that and to set the right expectation, is that what you're saying, is what I agree with. Thanks. Um, I've been to meeting after meeting after meeting, as well as all the other people that keep coming. I've yet to hear an explanation as to why the books aren't closed. I hear we're going to get it, we're going to get it. Yeah. Why? That's a very good question. That's a great Nobody question. Nobody knows why. I don't have that Everybody answer. I want that answer, too. The question of why should be asked with a why. Everybody knows. We need that answer because <laughs> all of the people that are watching this right now are just pulling their hair out to them. Okay. What Will, the hell's going Will on? Will was right here when I, I asked that question half a dozen ways for a half hour, and I was told by the forensic accountant that our tax dollars pay $70 an hour, whatever it is he makes, that it was none of my concern that they would take care of it. Well, they've taken care of it, and this is the position we're in. So I, I, I brought it up every single meeting. I can't do anything else. I'm one person. I, I, I can keep bringing it up every single meeting, but we'll just, I mean, again, if we have this meeting in May, and people just have spite, like they've had enough, vote no to the override, we literally, we have to shut, I don't even know if it would even be possible. It could mean receivership, it because is, it, because it we can't just shut everything down, because we still have to pay insurance, we still have to pay, so that the, the pipes don't, yeah. well the pipes wouldn't be an issue then, because we're so, done. So we still my, have to pay right My question to the board right now, probably the whole town's right. question would be, why? If you don't have an answer, you don't have an answer. Yeah. It's not, it, I may I speak, it's, it, it's why and it's, Mr. Marco is here, and he is saying, I think that so far, we have a nice little update here, which is more than we've gotten since I've been here, and it's very well laid out. Um, they, 
they will be ready to close by the end of the month. And I think that's why that we have you here is to make that make that determination and to work with those people. And you know, he's only here a couple days a week, but it's a matter of we need to take action, and that's what the people are expecting okay. now, yep. not a month from now. Like, oh, well, sort of. They're I, from what I hear, you're all tired of hearing that. Now we need a meeting now. Well, if I could just yes. comment too, uh, yeah, uh, Jeff. If I could just comment. Yes. Um, I'm sorry. This is, as far as I'm concerned, my only priority between now and the 14th of, of March. <coughs> there were two problems: entries into the general ledger and cash reconciliation. Yeah. Cash reconciliation is done, as Jeff pointed out. It has been it's accomplished done. by the forensic accountant. So, We're now waiting for the uh, for the uh, accountant the town accountant, who is part-time, to uh, fix the general en general ledger entries, then we're done. Uh, as, and I, I came away convinced this morning that he's going to have that done, if not by Friday, by midweek next week. And then we can get to Schedule A. If no one else, I can do Schedule A. If no one else <laughs> has time to do it, I may end up doing it, but I'm just trying to underscore that this is our priority, and we just can't let March 14th arrive without having that information to the Department of Revenue, because it it just compounds the crisis to lose oh state gosh, aid, and it'd be very embarrassing, and oh all of us, I think, will feel that we've let the town down. So. And the account does know now that it's it's all on him because the part that. There was two things going on, the, the general ledger and, and everything going from cities and towns into VADAR and also the cash book reconciliation and stuff that hadn't been done. <coughs> it, just, it, it goes back, you know, a couple of years that things just snowball. So one half is, is done. And now he just has to do the rest of the general ledger stuff and it he was asked by by Bob he was asked myself it was asked you know, a couple different ways by a few different people you know when 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 I, I, I explained to him I said hey I keep asking you you know you, you don't like my emails because I, I just keep asking you the same question when and um, he, he now this letter from the DOR about you know the schedule A and everything he's he said, I'll have it done by the end of the month, and Bob reminded him, well, that's Friday. And he goes, I'm pretty confident I'll be done, you know, by then. And the Schedule A will get submitted on time. So, but it is the why is not closed, is that there's like two answers there. And I, I know it's been, you know, we finished this week, this week, next week, next week. Uh, it's just been, you know, Doing stuff slow. Yes. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. We'll think yes. first. <clears throat> Listening to the <coughs> town administrator and what has been said earlier this evening, <coughs> the gentleman to the right of the chairman of the board made a statement. I'm not sure if it was one slight mean ago or two. But I thought he made a statement that, in my mind, made a lot of sense. We take all the information that was presented tonight, along with the idea that the $505,000 is something we have to look at and at the next town meeting. He made a comment that maybe we should go forward and forget about the certified free cash at this time, because we'll need the money next year anyway. Let's move forward. And this is a suggestion that he made. I thought it was a wonderful suggestion. Me too. And I think that if we had followed his suggestion at that time, we would be moving forward. Mm -hmm. but I, I, I think that he was right. I just want to make a brief comment. I just want to make a brief comment. As far as it's complicated because everybody, in my opinion, um, everybody wants answers. They want you want answers, right? You want to an you want the answers, but I think that we would have um, a month um, to educate the public, um, and you they watch the meetings. So and we have all kinds of budget cut 
information, impact statements, free cash that might be there. We need a $500 and $5,000 shortfall. So all of the information is there. I had spoken to Bob, and I know I'm going to speak out of turn, but having a, town, having a town hall meeting or just having a video that can be posted. There are lots of ways to educate um, the public. So, and I would definitely be helping to do that. Okay. Um, so we have to do a day. Yeah, just I'll make it briefly. And, and, and I, I, seem, I know I seem agitated and frustrated because I am. And I'm not being difficult just to be difficult. Because if you, I mean, if, if you remember, and I completely agree with what Julie is saying, uh, Slep, uh, Min Farrell is saying, that if this were in December, like when we started discussing this, or the end of November, and it was, we should wait till we have all the information, I would completely agree. If, I mean, last week I voted with, with Julie and Jeff to cancel the March 8th meeting because I didn't think, you know, let's get the information from the accountant and the treasurer, uh, hear what the, um, what the town administrator has to say, and then we can make a decision. And based on what I'm hearing, what the town administrator has said is that end of March, we should be good. good. And even if we are not, we have to do something. We cannot wait till May and then shut down the town completely and hope that that is enough to save the money so that we don't go negative. Um, and start defaulting on things and worry about receivership. I think that scheduling the meeting for the 29th at this point would be the responsible thing to do, even if it, we may have less knowledge on March 29th than we may on May 9th. As you know, what happens at that special town meeting is outside of this board's control. It's up to the voters, so we have to be prepared that the voters may vote no to override, may vote no to um, free cash, and may say cuts in which case we need to make have the time to make those cuts without the town shutting having to shut down completely. Oh. Um, yes, but you know, you'd have a chance of passing that if the Mrs. Miller, I'm too bad she's here, if she would show, tell the money that she got from that override, all the raises and the stuff they got there, the kids got nothing, go look at the raises. That should be all publicized, how much some of them got. How much a yeah. raise she get? How much raise Rick can get? How much raise Tommy Miller get? Look and see. Look and see if yet you're picking on somebody else. Why didn't she put that down? Was she got six hundred thousand dollars, and the rest of the time got fifty thousand dollars to take care of the people that get their jobs back. She's not saying that, though, no. but she's asking for more and more money. It's the truth. Why don't you just say that? Publicize that. How much they got for their raises and stuff. Let the people know. You'd see a boat change quick. You'd see a boat really change quick. All right. Uh, yeah, the only comment I would really like to make is, regardless of what we do, we need to have the school's special town meeting and our town meeting together. We don't want to have two. Whether we have it on March 29th or April 4th or April 12th, I don't really think it's that big a deal. With these big construction projects, a one or two week delay isn't going to make any difference to the bottom line or to the end of the process. But the, the key thing, in my opinion, is we have to do both town meetings together. If we do two separate ones, we're just shooting ourselves in the foot. We're perpetuating that, oh, that's their thing, this is our thing, right. which isn't the case. We are one town, right. just like Diane said. Thank the you. school and the town, we are one. Well, so we've got to do it together. But they, can, but they can pay for it. If we have it too much later, the grant well, may not cover that. Yeah. All right, so. Can we just can we make a motion? Can we make a motion? Uh, I would entertain a motion to set uh, a special town meeting date. I'll make a motion to set a special town meeting date for March 29th. Um, do I need to add anything to that? I'm sorry. Is that okay? No. Okay, second. Uh, and second. Uh, actually, no, if we, get, if we pass the date, then we, we can pass that the date we can that you had already figured out, right? But. All right, motion made to say that to, <clears throat> to have to set a special town meeting date of March 29th. That's a Saturday, and uh, get the time set we can get from the school the town clerk. In the town clerk, right? I just want to be a buyer boiler. The wood All right, motion made and seconded. Any further? Just, just one thing, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I, I, what happens, and, and this is a scenario that you really need, and I mentioned this last time, you can't count that 
your free cash is going to cover everything. Mm -hmm. the, the realism here is the, the voters out there that I've spoken to, and I don't know if you've spoken to some, are saying, yes, I might pass, I might vote for an override, but I don't see the town making any cuts. If you go for that full amount, it's not going to pass. That's my, that's my opinion. <coughs> if you have some level of cuts and you say, I still that's need this right. amount of money, the likelihood of getting that with some of the money for the school is much greater. So, I mean, that's... that's the Won't that come when we talk that's, about that's a like the articles? Issue. That doesn't have to be discussed that's right that's now. But that's, we just need to set a date. That's why the certified free cash number, in my opinion, is important. Mm -hmm. So we have three options and we can divide. We're using part of this, we're using some cuts, and we're using... But that's why we have all so. this plus impact statements so that the townspeople can see that also. Maybe they don't want these cuts or maybe they want some of them or at least all that information would be out there. But that would be to come with the warrant articles. Right now we're just deciding right. on a date. Motion made and seconded to set a special town meeting date of March 29th. Thank you, God. If it snows, you're going to have a cancellation date? You're going to kick it out? It won't March now. You better you remember be, that. you got to be dedicated okay, if you want to work. Okay, come to work. All right, Safety all right. hazards. All right, that's it. No, Julie. No, the truth. No. Free to speak up. Doug. Yes. Diane. Yes. Ken. Yes. And right. yes. All right. <coughs> <coughs> now I would entertain a motion to open the warrant tomorrow, um, and it would be. Uh, 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 and that would close at noon time. Well, uh, 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 tomorrow's what date? Well, it opens up tomorrow's 25th. It has to be open for 14 days. Does that include tomorrow? Yes. All days. Tenth. Noon time on the tenth. So you want right. a motion to? I yes. make a motion to open the warrant on February 25th. 2014 and to close at noontime on March 10th. Second. All right, motion made, seconded. Any discussion? Julie? Abstain. Doug? Yes. Diane? Yes. Yes. And yes. I'm only going to ask this one more time, please. If we need to converse, if you want to talk about things outside of this meeting, please go outside. If you have a question, please address the chair. <coughs> All right, so we have that done. Um, that needs to be uh, the town clerk and um, the school superintendent to let them know and let the town clerk. The school, because we have to make sure the gym and everything's available. For what? For Monday? For, for the, I mean, tomorrow, about the special town meeting date, it needs to go to the town clerk so Carol knows okay. the plan because she has to have the registrars and all that stuff all lined up. Okay. And the school for availability um, and a time and the moderator and and also the moderator has to be there and Paul D call it in council tool all right now check all the way out here we have uh, three things left to discuss. Uh, the selectmen's policies and procedures. I know there's two items. Uh, having a town hall, setting up a town hall meeting type of thing. And some things on the personnel policy to adjust, uh, like remove town coordinator, replace town administrator and things. I know Holly has started working on that. I believe she sent an email out to everybody. The reason I'm asking this is, 
Are those important enough that you want to have it tonight? Or nope. I, it off nope, I didn't even really. I think I, I had said I really didn't want a big deadline for this because okay. a million other projects to work on. But it's nice that Holly went through um, and did all that already. I really appreciate that. Um, I will take this paper copy, though, so that I can make some notes to myself. But I don't have any update on that. Okay. So uh, we can discuss that next time. Or all right. So the last thing would be, uh, anybody have anything other than what's the, uh, for the agenda, uh, other than the things that have been brought forward? Agenda. Um, a couple of people in town have asked me about, and I believe that Mr. Spring has brought this up, about insurance and um, are we doing something about that? Are we looking at that or do we have... I would like that to be discussed again if it's not been on the agenda. And that's a significant cost to this town, and that we should really be looking into how to uh, reduce that cost. So, am I right the about that, Will? It's, it's usually done through the insurance board. The insurance board has not met yet. Okay. I, I'm the representative for the advisory board, and I've been pushing the last two years to have that happen. It hasn't happened. Okay, so I'm, I'm asking that that be done. So can we have that as an agenda item and that we actually... We need to. We need to stop talking about stuff, and we need to actually well, do something. Well, we need to put people on it. Right. So that okay. They can so meet. who can be on? So we can. Can we have that as an agenda item for like the next meeting or the meeting after that? I know we have some critical things to discuss, but that needs to be within our radar. Is really what I'm asking for. Yeah, and by the way, just so you understand, even though that committee may meet right now, it will take a while for them to gather all the information yeah. right. before they can even get that. You may not see anything until next year okay. but if we don't do something now we're that's, not going to get that's, anywhere that's so we need to do something now is all right what and I'm on asking. that we had this had been talked about recently about changing insurance or, or looking out for bids and everything and because of <coughs> budgetary and time constraints um, we vote the board voted to extend the contract with the Maya right for things but because you had to create the, uh, the insurance committee that gathered information, uh, going out for bids and everything, and there just wasn't time for that. And that's we did it for it was, I believe it was two years. Um, so you know, it's not a, like if we create the committee that this is going to happen like fiscal year 15. I believe some people have already put on it, but. Uh, We'd have to create, I mean, the committee appoint the members and then they have to meet and, like I said, it's going to have to look at things and we can come before the board and we, you know, invite, go out to bid uh, your RFPs and all that stuff for, yeah, but it has been brought up, talked about, it's been done in other, you know. We actually had a vendor come in that actually made a presentation to the coordinator, myself, and the treasurer. It's a local person and he had some really good information as far as that goes and the costs but we didn't have we didn't have the information as to what we insure I understand so if we bring this up as an agenda item um, so at like the next meeting or the meeting after you already have a, a board you you have people on the board. so I guess I'm gonna have to understand so you could bring that information with you or a couple of weeks would be fine not we have other things to but that need, definitely needs to be done. The advisory um, board has already put a letter in saying that I'm the representative, okay, fine. and I don't know who, I can't, I can't remember who the select board had, and there was, uh, you were looking at for somebody at large, I believe, and okay. there was a question whether there should be somebody from, uh, because of the, okay. the cost, you're talking about health insurance too, whether somebody from the bargaining unit should be. And I believe Mr. Ritter asked that, and he never got any feedback from the bargaining unit as to have somebody come in. So, I mean, that's... Okay. Right. And there was that, a lot of yeah. things that needed to be... That's, that's right. Yeah. There's still a few things that need to be pulled together. But that is a thing. That, that's another thing that we have to save money. Yes. Regionalization, consolidation, all of these things. And now it's coming to the forefront that the event suggested that these changes weren't made, and now the people see it that they need to be done. Yes. I would just looked at my card. I am the representative from the Board of Selectmen on the Insurance Advisory Committee, and we did ask for 
representation from the unions because you can't meet until you have everybody on board. And an at-large member, I don't think we have got an at-large member either. So right. I don't believe anybody stepped up for that. Yeah. And I think there was one other, possibly one other member, and I can't remember uh, uh, it, who that was. It, it was right. a department head or, or I, I know that, and you won't like this, Bob, that this town administrator or town coordinator was ex officio. That's just another okay. another thing to throw at you. Uh, you know, I think I would argue that, that it's a big expense and ought to have uh, priority. I know it's difficult to <coughs> change health insurance. It's like changing your religion, as somebody once said. Uh, but in, there may be time to advertise and get together the information for liability insurance. Get bids out there and maybe make a, a change if that's warranted. Yeah. On the health insurance side, mm -hmm. I had asked in the, right. for the Gardner, and they they said we have basically the, the Cadillac of insurance because of, of we don't have a lot of copays and there's not a deductible. Where a lot of communities have got gone to that because there is a savings there. Right. Gardner changed theirs around with the insurance reform a couple of years yeah, back. GIC. So, uh, you know, and I had talked to Mayor Hawks about that when I was talking about dispatch and things like that. Yes. Just a quick comment. The health insurance is the <coughs> only thing that the town has going for it for its employees. Please don't mess with it. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I thought we had the employees was going for the town. I'm saying for the employee benefits. Yeah. Health insurance is the only thing that we really have. Well, they have to leave. I mean, that's the other thing we should be considering is instead of perhaps changing the good insurance that you know we do offer, perhaps the employee contribution is just bigger. You know, it's it's 7, 25. 25. All right. 25. 25. 25. Yeah. 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 You want another thing for the time? Yeah. yeah. Um, I have mem just to bring up a discussion of membership in North Quabbin District, but that came up when that gentleman, what was his name, Mr. Kaplis? Yes. Okay. He lives in town. He's a veteran, and right. he's taken an interest in us. Right. And I think we have until, according to the contract with North Quabbin, um, until April 1st to make that kind of a decision. So I think it's time to get started on that, which is yes. a good thing. Yes. We also um, need to clean up some housekeeping stuff. We have an animal control regional agreement with Gardner that has expired, so that oh. needs to get done. I thought we had a letter, they were gonna, yes, there's the letter that came. Um, they were gonna, uh, they were gonna just go off our, 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 yeah, uh, our last. Just as an agenda yeah. item so we can figure out where we are with that. Oh yeah, they were gonna scrap the increase and just go with what? had originally been budgeted because that's what was budgeted in 14. Okay. Okay. All right. I, I know that let us float out there. All right. And then, uh, <coughs> not for this, the meeting on the 3rd, but for the meeting on the 10th, the regular meeting, um, consideration of contacting the Inspector General's office regarding the vote on wind turbine. Um, I did contact the town clerk about any votes taken at town meeting on financing or even the wind turbine at all. And I don't believe there are any votes taken at town meeting. And I believe that this creates a liability for the town. So I think we need um, to figure out exactly what our liability is. And trust funds. I think we need to send a letter to the Attorney General. We have a lot of trust funds in town that can't be accessed or used because they're so old and the wording of them. But I guess you can go to the Attorney General's office and uh, petition to have them changed to something else. But I think there's that's a charities division at the Attorney General's office because I, I was having lunch with town attorney Dorensis at the MMA conference and I asked him that. And he goes, You don't need to spend any money on me. This is what you do. Um, and you send a letter because a lot of towns, a lot of towns have done it. There's a lot of these trust funds that are old, and, and the library is looking at, at theirs in particular, uh, which is how that conversation came up. So you, you approach the charities division, and you show them the original trust and what you want to do, and they look at it, and they make a determination, yeah, that fits, and they couldn't have foreseen that, and they, they change it. And it, it's done quite often. So. <coughs> 
so I would like that as an agenda item so we can figure I'll out what the that. trust funds are, how they're worded, and what we might want to change the wording to. Okay, uh, anything else? No, just that the sewer department is having a rate hearing next Monday at 7 here. Okay. See the nice sidewalk that we had the water break. You see the marble's gone, huh? You got it on side of another lawn, they didn't put it back. We had the water break the other day. How much more did they lose then? It was just a service. We took off a big piece of granite already. Nice count. sidewalk there. Yeah. That can make four months. We make four months without having to tear up the road. Yeah. Good thing we replaced all that water mains when we rebuilt that road, eh? Uh huh. Diane? Um, I came to a training here, um, was that last week, Holly, with M.I., and there was, you know, it was really nice um, that I was able to uh, attend that, and the one um, takeaway that I, I had was that um, we don't say thank you to you enough, any of you, and that I, I totally lived in this town long enough, and I... Um, deal with a lot of you on a personal level well before I became a selectman and that they feel um, undervalued and underappreciated. So I just wanted to say thank you. I know that we've had a lot of snowstorms and that um, these people work tirelessly to keep us um, safe and plowing and sanding and I just really, um, I appreciated like all the comments that were said like openly um, even in front of me. So. I just wanted to say thanks and that I really appreciate it. Um, all that openness. So, thank you. Uh, the only thing I have is I just wanted to remind people that you can um, go on, uh, if it's on the school district's webpage, not the town, but um, the. All right, hold up, please. The, uh, the uh, school budget uh, subcommittee meetings, we're wrapping up. I think we have two left, maybe three. They canceled two. Oh, okay. So um, if you check their website, I don't have the dates with me, but in March are when the big, it's the full school committee plus the budget subcommittee, and that's when actual public hearings on the budget are. So all of your questions that you have about raises and administrative costs and whatnot, rather than directing them at the Board of Selectmen, the better place to direct them would be to the school committee, because that's what we're going to be there. And it's for public comments. So the whole reason they have these is for the public to ask their questions and make their comments. So I would suggest, again, there's two dates in March, um, and it's the full sub, the full budget, uh, the full school committee and the budget subcommittee, and they are there for the express purpose of answering your questions. So. No, you have to present that to the board, right? Select board? No. no. Well, wait a minute. I was on that committee way back. When Heaven was there, my wife was working in the school system. He put me on there to be a sucker, to suck everything he's gotten into it, to say everything was right. Okay. He came to the Sweckman's meeting, and he sent these figures here. And we said to Heaven, they make the figures we decided at the meeting. Oh, so, the, okay. Why, right. did, why did it have to come to the select board then? Why did it have to present the, the board to the selectman? And Will can correct me if I'm incorrect, but the, the school committee is under no legal obligation to adopt the budget that the subcommittee comes up with. Historically, they always have. But they don't have the obligation to do that. That's how I understood it. Um, so she said it's not a waste of time for us all to be there because historically the school committee does adopt that. But if there was some discrepancy and they didn't want didn't like what we had voted on, that's why we have the two big committees where it's the school committee and the subcommittee there. So if there's a question, you we have the chance you don't have to present it to the board. It's like board. No. Oh yes, they do. Why the other ones always have to do it? Come on. The committee needs to, not the subcommittee. Subcommittee is making their own recommendations. Okay. School committee has to. The school committee. Right. Well, I don't know what school committee policy is because I'm not on the school committee. Well, you want to sit on the board on the finance committee. I don't know what the policy is. They don't know what the policy is. Step off at that. All right. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The meeting dates on the website are March 5th and March 26th. That's correct. So that's what, what they you want to do, I guess. March 5th and March 26th. That's right. Yeah. All right. Uh, you want to be done, sir? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm set. Okay. Uh, as far as the highway department goes, you guys that plow plow the roads, riding around in heated trucks, drinking coffee. I don't Because <laughs> <laughs> I do the same thing, sir. Uh, Me too. 
Do you? No, you're. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, now yeah, you're yeah. on that subject. How old your truck? Mine just turned two hundred. Uh, two hundred thousand miles. Wait, we're long ninety eight, two thousand four, ninety seven. Oh, I got uh, We won't go there. My car is almost there. Eighty something. Eighty seven. Oh, what? Eighty something. Eighty four. Okay. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Just one, one question, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, I got contacted over the weekend. This individual was looking for information on the elementary school building committee. He went to the website. He found nothing there. They had heard that they were looking for Five hundred thousand dollars that you've heard. He didn't find it on our website. He didn't find any meeting minutes. This is a this is a town committee. Yes, and the question is. came to me as to why. I couldn't answer that. I I, I told this okay. individual you should be coming to this board. He says you're responsible for the money. You should, if you can, please bring that up as to why this committee does not have their minutes. And, and their meetings, oh, their, their meetings are posted. Right. But the, but the, the meeting, the uh, actual uh, composite <coughs> of the board is not on there. They don't have uh, an actual site on on the the town website, and there's no there's no meeting minutes. And this individual was looking for the meeting minutes that they can verify the, the money that, that you talked about earlier. And I mean, I found that. Very upsetting, and there was there were some comments made about the selectmen. I won't tell you what those were. But I mean, oh, please don't. They, 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 no, they weren't nice. I, I mean, I ended up trying to take a hand up, handing it as nicely as I could, and said I would at least bring it to the board because it is a town committee. It is really up to you folks to take it, end up pursuing that, and make sure that the meeting minutes are on the website. Or in the town clerk's office for the town folks to see them. I mean, that's that's the obligation we have as all all boards and committees. So I, I'm bringing that to you. So maybe you want to talk about that at the next meeting. It is the chairman of that committee that is ultimately responsible for the agenda and the minutes, and that's where you should go to start with. They should have a, you know, a breakdown of, you know, who does what and where they are. All right. We have a motion to adjourn. We had a motion to begin second. I don't second. know if it was seconded. No. Second. It is now. Okay. <laughs> Made and seconded. Uh, Julie. Yes. Doug. Yes. Diane. Yes. Ken. Yes. Yes. Thank you all for coming.